Good morning, everyone. Welcome again to our morning worship and prayer. Our devotion for today is on Psalm 40, so allow me to read in verse 3. It says, He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Let's begin this morning by singing what God has put in our mouths, a song of praise to our God. We adore you, God. Every day 
Lord, thank you for you alone is our Savior. You alone are God. And Lord, today we give you praise and we give you worship. I pray that you administer your peace, your love, and your joy to each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, allow me to read one verse. I know Psalm 40 has many verses. But uh, allow me to read one verse, and I want to focus on this one verse which really sets the tone for the rest of the chapter of Psalm 40. Psalm 40, verse 1, I wait patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. So we're going to talk today about that word that I'm sure all of you like, waiting. I have a confession to make. I don't like waiting. Uh, I remember back in college, not too long ago, uh, tingin ko, sinadya ni Lord yun to build my character of patience. The infamous registration in UP, <laughs> where it takes you forever to get uh, a few subjects and a few units in. And usually, I would start <laughs> classes, first day of classes, I have zero units because I don't like waiting. I don't like to fall in line. And one of the most stressful things for me uh, uh, to do is driving in traffic. Again, guilty. I don't like waiting. If uh, you're like me, raise your hand, put an emoji there. And you know what makes it harder now to wait? We live in a world where everything is instant and quick, uh, don't we? We want quick food, instant noodles, instant coffee. We want quick service, fast food, drive through. Uh, we, uh, today, we want uh, quick messages. So, text. Pag hindi nag-reply, what's wrong with you? Diba DM, PM. Pag seen ka, parang you feel bad, hindi siya nag-reply. Instant information, Google. Uh, and because of that, we want quick results. Uh, people get in trouble because they want instant wealth, instant money. Uh, some... Uh, advertisers would promise instant hair growth. I don't know why that is so important. I am sure that is not important. Hashtag hugot ako yun, mga kapatid. But uh, the reality is this. Even though waiting is hard and even though most of us don't like it, especially in this time where we get things quickly, the reality is waiting is part of life. Let's think for a moment. Before you came out of your mother's womb, you had to wait nine months. Can you imagine? I'm sure some of you, if you were already conscious, couldn't wait. Parang siguro, one day pa lang gusto mo na lumabas. But you had to wait nine months. You had to wait a couple of months before you walk. You have to wait a couple of years to graduate. Some of you waited more years than others. Uh, in order for you to get a job, you get a job interview, you can get the result right away. You have to wait for the result. Uh, if you're single, 
you have to wait to find Mr. and Miss Right so that you don't end up with Mr. Right Now or Miss Right Now. If you're working, you have to wait to get promoted. You can't, don't get promoted in an instant. The reality is waiting is part of life. And now, during this pandemic, uh, people are always asking, when will this pandemic end? My daughter would always uh, ask me, Dad, when do you think this would end? Dad, when do you think this would end? It's almost like every day she would ask me. And yet, this is just one of those realities and facts of life that we need to face. The psalmist said this, wait patiently for the Lord. Now, when you think about waiting on the Lord, that sounds really spiritual, isn't it? Uh, some of you have probably used it. Some of you have probably heard of it. And like, it's like this mystical, like, mm, I wait on the Lord. Mm. It sounds so spiritual, but what does it really mean? If you look at the psalmist, when he said, I wait, that word wait uh, literally means staying personally involved, usually with a positive tension that strains the mind in a certain direction in an expectant attitude. So with that kind of definition, I want to submit to you that waiting on the Lord means three things. Number one, waiting on the Lord means to wait patiently. How many of you have ever prayed for patience before? Maybe you've uh, done uh, uh, what others would say, Lord, I pray that you'd give me patience. Now, Lord, I can't wait. Give it to me now. When we think of patience, it's, it seems like we think of patience as like a commodity that you get or, or like a virus that you catch. But patience is not something you get or you give away or you, you hoard. Patience is not a commodity. Patience is not a thing. Patience is a deliberate act of humility and trust that God knows best. Therefore, I can wait patiently. If you're familiar with Habakkuk, one of the minor prophets, his complaint, his major complaint, and he went to God, and I'm sure uh, you've heard of our devotions where uh, if you see bad things happening, you can complain. But don't put it on Twitter or social media. You complain directly to God because He has the answers and He can do something about it. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3, uh, I, I, before that, the, the main complaint of Habakkuk was this, Lord, why do you allow all this injustice and violence? I mean, if you can relate. He was asking God, why do you allow this? In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3, God answered him. And it, God says, if it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. God was talking about his response to violence and injustice and if you look at how he answered it he said i'm gonna bring babylon to invade israel so in other words god's going to answer the complaint of injustice and violence in israel by bringing more violence and injustice through babylon yet if you look at the result of this Babylonian invasion, about 600 years after, it led to the Jewish exile, which eventually led to synagogues being established in uh, different parts of the world, which eventually led to the spread of Christianity more than 600 years after. Wow, I bet Habakkuk did not see that. I bet Habakkuk did not expect that you see god sees god hears and god cares and god is always doing something we can never ever judge god according to our timetable i remember mary and martha when their brother lazarus died had the same uh, kind of complaint to the lord they said lord if you had been here my brother would not have died in other words lord if you were not late how many of you have ever <laughs> accused God of being late? And yet, we know that Jesus said, Lazarus' death resulted in Jesus revealing his glory. 
If you look at Genesis, everything went wrong for Joseph so that Israel can be saved. If you look at history, missionaries were kicked out of communist China so revival could happen. In this ongoing pandemic, the question is this, could it be that God is doing something glorious that we just have to wait patiently for us to see the fulfillment of it? Even if it seems slow, we never wait in vain because God is always doing something. A uh, second meaning of waiting on the Lord is to wait proactively. Uh, imagine waiters in this pandemic, some restaurants are, are empty. Waiters with no customers because it's empty. Usually, you, you'll see them, they're doing something. They're cleaning the place. They're engaging potential customers. Now, imagine a waiter when the restaurant is empty, sitting and doing nothing. Or worse, a waiter that leaves the restaurant because nothing is happening. You see, sometimes in waiting, we are so tempted to just sit and do nothing. Or worse, we're tempted to leave our post. Well, I want to encourage you today, even if you don't feel good while waiting, or even if you feel like you're not getting anything out of waiting, don't stop or don't leave. You still do what God wants you to do. That's waiting proactively. I remember the disciples in Acts chapter 1. I mean, the Jews had been waiting for the kingdom of God for years, many years. Finally, Jesus talked about the kingdom. And when Jesus was about to ascend to heaven, they looked at Jesus. They said, Lord, is it now? Is it now, Lord? When? When? When are you bringing the kingdom of God? And Jesus did not answer them about when. Jesus said, you will be my witnesses. In other words, you wait proactively, do something. Now, it was Thomas Edison who said this, everything comes to him who hustles while he waits. So I want to encourage us as we wait. If you're single and you're waiting for Mr. or Ms. Wright, hustle while you wait. If you're waiting for your dream job, hustle while you wait. If you're waiting for the quarantine to end, hustle while you wait. Continue praying. Continue reading the Bible. Continue serving. Continue attending church. Continue attending victory groups. Continue doing good. Because that's what it means when we say wait on God. And lastly, number three, it's waiting positively. Satan accused uh, God, Job before God. And he said, the only reason why Job is serving you is because you're blessing him. So the Lord allowed Satan to test Job. And everything was stripped from him. And Job had gone through some tough times. And it took time before everything turned around. He needed to wait. You see, when dark times come and we have to wait some time for it to be over, those are the times that we find out if we really serve God or if we're getting God to serve us. You see, waiting on God is really all about God, not us. It's not about my situation. It's not about my blessing, my feeling, my question, my frustration, my answers. When we say we wait on God, we can wait positively and expectantly because it's not so much about what you're waiting for, but who you're waiting for. Waiting on God means you're not just waiting for your provision, you're waiting for the provider. You're not just waiting for your healing, you're waiting for your healer. You're not just waiting for justice, you're waiting for the righteous judge. You're not just waiting for the Lord's answer. You're waiting for His presence. And the good news is this. No matter how long it takes, He always comes. Therefore, there's hope. I want to end this uh, short devotion in verse 16 to 17, in the message translation. It says, But all who are hunting for you, or all who are seeking you, Oh, let them sing and be happy. Let those who know what you're all about tell the world you're great and not quitting. And me, I'm a mess. I'm nothing and have nothing. 
Make something of me. You can do it. You've got what it takes. So let's end with that. And let's trust God. And let's have that posture of humility to acknowledge that He knows best and He will always come. Lord, thank You for this word to wait patiently on You. Lord, I know a lot of us are impatient. It is easily, uh, it's easy to be impatient, especially when things are not going good. We want answers. We want breakthroughs. We want answered prayers. But Lord, I pray that you teach us to wait on you. Teach us to wait patiently. Teach us to wait proactively. But most of all, teach us to wait positively because we know it's not what we're waiting for. It's who we're waiting for. We're waiting on you. And thank you that you will come. So Lord, meet us where we're at. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship God again as we close. Who has measured the waters in the palm of his hand and knows every detail? Was marked of the heavens with outstretched arms, the great I am. Who has measured the waters in the palm of his hand and knows every detail? You know it, O oh Lord. Who has marked of the Thank you, uh, music team. Let me close with a benediction and a blessing for all of us. I'm very familiar with Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make His face shine upon us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. God bless you all. Have a great day and a great week.